We continue now at the top of Daf Tzadi Amid Beis and Maseches Ksubis. This is Ksubis Daf 90b. On the previous summit, the Gemara was discussing, let's say, of a situation where a person dies and he has two wives. So in general, the halach is that the first wife comes first in terms of collecting her Ksuba. But the Gemara had made a diak and said, it should have said in the Mishnah, that if the second if the second wife grabs it, if she takes the property first, we don't take it away from her. And the fact that it doesn't say that, it sounds like we would take it away from her. Even if the second one grabs the property, it would still go to the first wife. And the Gemara says, not necessarily. It could be that the language of the Mishnah, the reason why the Mishnah did not phrase it in that way, and the reason why the Mishnah uses the word kodemes, is because that's the same word that is used at the end of the Mishnah, as the Gemara now says, tonanami, because the fact that the later part of the Mishnah it says Kodemis, that's why it also says in the earlier part, Harishona Kodemis Lishnia, that the first wife comes before the second, that's why it phrases it in that manner, and it doesn't say that if the second wife takes, we do n- if the second wife grabs it first, we do not take it away from her, even though that is the case. Rashi over here says, Tananami Reisha Lishna de Lechatchila Kodemis, because of the fact that in the Seva the Mishnah uses the language of Kodemis, that's what it says in the Reisha as well, this language of a Lechatchila language, Velotanim Kodma Vitam and it doesn't say that if she gets up, the second wife and takes, that we don't take it away from her. But really, again, it could be that even if that were the case, if she were to take it first, meaning the second wife, ain motzi, and we would not take it away from her. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Nasa Sarishona, this was the later case in the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, let's say he marries the first wife, and then the first wife dies before him, so she's not collecting the ksuba. Her children, her sons will collect the ksuba, is what we call ksubas binindichrin, whatever was set aside for her for the ksuba. At the time that they're going to inherit, they're supposed to inherit that larger amount. They don't have to necessarily divide it evenly with the sons of the other wives. And then it says again that he died, then he died before the second wife. So in that case, that wife, she's like a creditor. So, so she comes first, she takes her ksuba first, and then the ksubas binindichrin, only afterward would it go to the inheritors of the first wife. And the Gemara says, Shmami not to lost Shmami no. You see from the Mishnah three things from these, this halach in the Mishnah. Number one, you see, Achas Bechayo Achas Bemoso. Let's say you have a situation where one of the wives dies while he is alive, and one of them dies after he dies, meaning to say that second wife, she really is entitled to the Ksuba like a creditor. So, Yesh Lahen Ksubas Benin Dichren. Apparently, the halach of Ksubas Benin Dichren still applies to the children of that first wife. Now, you might say, no, Ksubas Benin Dichren shouldn't apply to them. Them because if it's not going to apply to the children of the second wife, because the children of the second wife, that wife was still alive when he died. There is no Ksubas ben Indichrin, so maybe it shouldn't apply to the children of the first wife. No, we don't say that Ksubas ben Indichrin applies even if it's only going to apply to the children of one wife. We're not afraid that that's going to cause fighting between the children. And the Gemara says, Me, my, how do you know that's the case? Because what does it say? It says, The second wife and those who inherit her, they come before the inheritors of the first wife. So, so yes, they take precedence because a creditor goes before an inheritor. But but let's say there's plenty of property, then there would be Ksubas ben Indichrin over here. That's certainly the implication of the Mishnah. That's the first thing we see from the Mishnah. Ushmaminon, we also see from the Mishnah, Ksuba Nasis Moser Chaverta, that even the ksuba that you're paying off to that second wife, that counts as enough leftover to allow the halach of ksubas ben indichrin. We mentioned when we were doing the Mishnah that the halach of ksubas ben indichrin only applies if there's going to be at least something left over for them to divide evenly. Because again, let's say you had a situation where there were two wives where there was ksubas ben indichrin. Let's say, for example, both wives would have died before the husband. So in that case, there's ksubas ben indichrin for the children of both wives. And let's say one of them has a larger amount than the other in the ksuba, then that, that set of children will get the larger ksuba ben in and that's the halacha. And we don't say you divide it all evenly, but that only applies if after you divide up the property of the ksuba, there's going to be something left over to divide up like a normal Yerusha. If not, then we don't have this whole halacha of ksuba ben in because on a Doraisa level, really everyone should be equal. All the sons of the various wives should be equal, and there has to be something, some property, at least a dinar's worth of property, that's going to be divided up according to the Doraisa way of dividing up an inheritance. Now, over here in this case, the Mishnah seems to be saying that when we pay off the ksuba to the second wife or to the children of the second wife, that is enough. That counts as leftover property uh, of an inheritance to allow the halach of ksuba ben indichrin, and we wouldn't need anything beyond that. We wouldn't need an extra dinar that is divided up between everybody to allow the halach of ksuba ben indichrin to take place. That's what it means that the ksuba is considered a moser. It's considered leftover. It's considered as if there was extra surplus property that 
that allows us to employ the halacha of Ksubas Benin Dechren. And the Gemara explains, Mimai, how do we know that? Midalo Katani, because it doesn't say in the Mishnah, Moser Diner, that if there's an extra Diner, now we apply the halacha of Ksubas Benin Dechren. So apparently we apply it simply because the first, the second wife is going to collect her Ksuba, that's considered a Moser, and that allows Ksubas Benin Dechren to apply. And finally, the Gemara says, Ushma Minan, we also see from the Mishnah, Ksubas Benin Dechren, that when it comes to Ksubas Benin Dechren, which again is the amount that's going to go to the inheritors of the first wife, Lo Tarfa Mimishabdi, they can't go ahead and collect from property with a lien when they're trying to collect that property of the Ksubas Benin Dechren. How do we know they can't do that? Very simple. The Salka died in Tarfa Mimishabdi, because if we, if you think that by Ksubas Benin Dechren in general, you can even collect that Ksuba money, you can even collect that property from property that was sold off to Lakuchos where there's a lien on the property, so then the children of the first could actually end up collecting. Leisu b'nei rishona, all that has to happen is the children of the first wife come along, and they can just go ahead. Now those, the children of the second wife, they're no different. That That's a property with a lien on it, and the, the children of the first one, their lien precedes the children of the second wife, and so therefore they can simply go and say, okay, you collected your property because of the ksuba of your mother, but that property had a lien on it. We had the earlier lien, and therefore we can collect. So clearly they can cannot collect from the Chasum Shubadim, and that's why the property goes to the children of the second wife, and the children of the first wife have to wait till that's collected before they can start collecting. And the Gemara continues, Maskif la Ravashi. So now Ravashi asks, again, we have three things we're learning on the Mishnah, from the Mishnah, and we're questioning whether that's really the case. So Ravashi asks, Mimai, how do you know this from the Mishnah? Maybe really I can say to you, Achas achas So let's say you have a situation of two wives, and one of them dies while he's alive, and one of them dies after he dies. So you only have Ksubas Menendichren for that first wife. So maybe Einlein Ksubas Menendichren. Maybe over there we are afraid there's going to be fighting, and we don't apply the Halach at all. Of Ksubas ben Indichren. Umay, Kodman, and so what does it mean? Because the whole proof was that it said that the second one come first, and therefore that implies that the children of the first wife would actually get the Ksubas ben Indichren. They just don't come first. That's not necessarily the case. What does the word Kodman mean? It simply means Lenachalo Katani. It simply means that when it comes to inheritance, they're going to come first. As Rashi over here says, Umay, Kodman, Damashma, what does it mean when it says Kodman, which seems to imply Ha'iika Midi Lemishka? It sounds like that if there's something left over after the, the, the children of the second wife collect their ksuba, it sounds like we do apply ksuba has been in but not necessarily. Says the Gemara, Kodman Lanachalam. Maybe it just means the children of the first wife, they come first in terms of regular inheritance. They're not going to get extra. They're not going to get ksuba has been in There's just leftover, and it'll be divided up like a regular inheritance. And like we always say, children of the first wife come before the children of the second. They're not going to take the ksuba, which we call the ksuba of their mother, the ksuba has been in it's going to be a regular Yerusha. But again, the children of the first wife are always going to come before the children of the second wife. So there's no real proof from the Mishnah that we're discussing Subas bin Indichrin. And the Gemara continues, If you're going to say to this, So why does it say the language? It says, Rishona. Rashi over here says, Rishona sounds like the inheritors from her property, from the mother. Lomali, what are you saying that for? The Karlu Yorshe Rishona. Halom Lomi Kocha, because Yorshe Rishona implies Ksuba has been in different, because they're inheriting her, meaning they're inheriting her Ksuba. Otherwise, they're really all just inheriting the father. So if that's not the case, if we're just talking about regular, from the father. Why does it say that? So why does it say again this type of language? So the, that's what the Gemara says. The Gemara says no. If you're going to say Yarshir Shona Lamali, then why does it use this language of Yarshir Shona, which does imply Ksubas Ben Indichren? That's very simple. I did the Tana Shniya Viyarsha because since in the Mishnah anyway we're going to phrase it as the second wife, that's the wife who dies after the husband and her Yarshim. So Tana Nami Il Yarshir Harishona. So we use the same language. We talk about Yarshim. But really, we just mean it's a regular, normal Yerusha. It's not Ksubas ben Indichren. As Rashi says, I did the Karu Levene Shniya Yorshe Oem. Since we call the children, the sons of the, of the second wife, the Yorshe Oem, Dinu Mino Kayorsi. Now, they really are inheriting from her because she collects her Ksuba and they get it from her. So, Karinu Levene Rishon and Ami Al Shem Yorshe. So, the children of the first wife also, we say it as if they're inheriting her, but really it's just regular inheritance. It's not that they're actually inheriting from her. El Shema be El it's just that it's what we're calling it Kilomar Livnei Harishon, and we just mean to say they're not the Yarshim of the first. We just mean to say the children of the first wife. 
And the Gemara continues. And now that also what you're trying to say from our Mishnah, that Ksuba Nasis Moser Lechaverti, you're trying to argue that our Mishnah seems to imply that once you pay off the Ksuba to the children of the second wife, that's the Moser. That shows that there was remaining, there was extra. And now you can apply the Halacha of Ksuba as ben And that's also not for, not necessarily true. Deal Moliola Meimelach, because maybe really I can say to you, Ein Ksuba Nasis Moser Lechaverti, that really the Ksuba cannot be considered like a Moser. And over here, we're really talking about a case where there was a Moser. It's not mentioned in the Mishnah, but there was actually some extra remaining, and that's what allows, uh, that's what allows Ksuba Espen and Dichon. It's not that the Ksuba that's paid to the second wife is the Moser, even though it's not mentioned in the Mishnah, there was some extra property there that was going to be divided after all of this happened. And the Gemara continues, V'yachas b'chayo, v'yachas So this issue over here, let's say you have one that dies while he's alive, and one wife that dies after he dies. So in such a situation, whether or not there's ksubas ben indichrin, tanoi, that's actually a machlokis tanoi. The Tanya, as we learned in a b'raisa, mesu achas b'chayo, v'yachas b'moso, exactly this case. Let's say they die, but one of them dies while he's alive, and one of them dies after he dies. So benanis omer, benanis says, yecholin b'nei arishon alomar livnei hashniya. So the children of the first wife can say to the children of the second wife, B'nei Balas Chov Atem, you, you are the children of a Balas Chov, she's like a creditor, because she died after the husband died, so she's entitled to the Ksuv as a creditor. Taluk, Suba Simcha Mutsu'u, take your Ksuba of your mother as you're supposed to, and then get out of here, meaning Ben Nanis is saying there is Ksuba Asbin and Dichrin in this case. Rabbi Akiva, um, Rabbi Akiva says, no, Kvar Kovtza Nachal Amilifnei B'nei Harishona, now the inheritance already jumped away from the children of the first one, V'naflo Lifnei B'nei Hashniya, and it's gone to the second one. In other words, it sounds like Rabbi Akiva is saying that in such a situation, since the second wife didn't die before the husband, but she died after the husband, so there is no Ksubas B'nei Dichrin. That's exactly how the Gemara understands it. My love, B'hakam Efelgi, isn't this Brisa saying exactly this Machlokas over here. The Mars one holds that when one dies while he's alive and one dies after he dies, there is Allah of Ksubas ben Indichrin. Omar Savar, Achas Bechai, Achas Bemoso, Ainlan Ksubas ben Indichrin. And the other one says, No, Rabbi Kiva says, No, there is no Ksubas ben Indichrin in such a situation because, again, it's going to cause fighting if there's only Ksubas ben Indichrin for one set of sons and not the other. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabba Rabba says, Ashke Chasinu, the Rabbon and the Beirav, the Yasvi Vakamri. I found the Rabbonin of the Beirav. They were sitting and they were saying as follows. It could be that's not what's going on between Ben Nanis and Rabbi Akiva. It could be, Really, everybody agrees that if one dies while he's alive and one dies after he dies, there is a din of Ksubas ben Indichrin. So what's Rabbi Akiva saying that there's no halach of Ksubas ben Indichrin over here? And here, the real machlokas is the other issue that we were discussing. Here, there's no extra money. And so remember the halach of Ksubas ben Indichrin only applies when there's going to be some remaining after you give out the ksuba has been indifferent. So here you didn't have any extra money. All you have is the ksuba that's being paid off to the second wife. Is that considered Moser? Is that considered an extra remaining al- amount that allows ksuba has been indifferent? And the Gemara continues, And the same would also be true in general. Let's say, in general, let's say it's not a ksuba that's being paid out to the second wife, but let's say you have a situation of a balchov. In other words, let's say you have a situation where there's some other creditor of the father that's being paid off. That amount that was paid off, that's considered extra, that's considered a remaining amount. And therefore, again, that also could be a machlokus, whether there's ksuba has been indichrin in such a situation. That's what it means, The same would, the same would apply by any balchov, just like it applies to the ksuba that's paid to the second wife and the Gemara explains one opinion holds the ksuba is considered a moser that's what Benana says so there is ksuba has been indichrin and the same would be true of any amount of money that's paid off to a creditor that would be considered as if there's a surplus in the estate and the other one says no a ksuba is not considered a surplus in the estate and the same would be true of a balchov and the Gemara continues again this is Rabbah quoting the Rabbonan of the yeshiva of Rav, and Rav says he had a slight disagreement with them. Now I said to them, to the Rabbon and Rav, if there's another outside creditor, and there was surplus funds that was used to pay that creditor, that's certainly considered a surplus, and there's 
Ksubas ben Indichrin, but keep Ligi Bechsuba, but the Machlokas ben Nanas. And Rabbi Kiva was specifically by a second Ksuba. When you're paying a Ksuba to a second wife, is that considered a surplus? Does that allow there to be a halacha of Ksubas ben Indichrin? So that's a possible interpretation of the Machlokas and the Brisa, and that would mean that everybody agrees there's Ksubas ben Indichrin, even if it's just one of the wives that dies before her husband. But uh, the Machlokas again is what's considered to be, whether it's considered to be a surplus. But the Gemara says one second, if that's the case, the language of the Brisa doesn't really work. Maskev Lord of Yosef, Rav Yosef asks on this approach, Yochi, if so, Rabbi Akiva Omer Kvar Kofz Nachala. Rabbi Akiva's language was that that's it, the inheritance has already jumped away from them, there's no, no Ksubas bin Indichrin. That's not what he should have said. He should have said, Yesh Moser Dinor Mi Boile, should have said, if there's an extra, if there's a surplus, then only then will there be Ksubas bin Indichrin. But he didn't say it that way. Sounds like he's saying there's no Ksubas bin Indichrin at all. El Omer of Yosef, so rather of Yosef says, no, this is the real interpretation of that price, so exactly like we thought originally, Biachas Bechayev, Biachas Bemoso Kamiflagi Bananas, and Rabbi are arguing again what happens if one dies while he's alive and the other one dies after he dies. There, do we have the Allah of Ksubas Ben Indichin? Are we concerned that there's going to be fighting if we employ that Allah or not? And the Gemara continues, Vahani Tanoi ki Hani Tanoi. And that Machlokas Tanoim is the same as the following Machlokas Tanoim. There's another Brisa that has the same Machlokas. The Tanya, as we learned in a Brisa, Nasa Sarishon of Amesa, he marries the first wife and she dies before him. Nasa Sashnia, then he marries a second wife, Umes Hu, and then he dies, so he dies before before her, before that second wife. Boin Boneho Shel Zula Achar Misa, Vinoteles Ksubas Iman. So then the children of the second wife, they come after her death and they can take the Ksuba of their mother. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, Im yesh moser dinar. So if there's a surplus, if there's a remaining amount of a dinar, elu notlin ksubasimon, vielu notlin ksubasimon, then both of the sets of children can take, these ones can take the ksuba of their mother, and those ones can take the ksuba of their mother. Meaning Rabbi Shimon seems to be saying that there is ksubas bin indichren, and that would imply the Rabbon and say there's no ksubas bin indichren. Vim lav, that's what he says, if not, cholken b'shavah, then they have to divide everything evenly. My lav, b'hokam iflagi, is it not to say this is the machlok? One of them holds that if one dies while he's alive and one dies after he dies, that there is going to be Ksubas bin Indichrin. And the other one says, no, in a case of Achas Bechai of Achas Bemoso, there is no Ksubas bin Indichrin. And the Gemara responds to this Brisa as well, Lo, no, it could be that's not what's going on over here. It could be both agree, the Tanakhama and Rabbi Shimon agree, that if one dies in his lifetime and one dies after his death, there is going to be Ksubas bin Indichrin, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daftzadi Aleph Ahmed Aleph.